get this thing started. Okay, so uh, it's loaded it in over here. You know, to save some other models. Maybe I don't need movement towards mouse anymore. Um, this was called SIR agent based calibration. Anyone need a TA? Okay. Um, so again, um, help menu example models, and then um, and then you go down in examples here, and it's SAR agent based calibration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so first, let's um, let's double click on person. This will be a familiar set of sort of assumptions. Um, Here we have an SIR type model that we've seen many times before. Familiar to this. This gives you a sense of what's driving individual level dynamics. Now, if you go and you run this calibration here, this is, is down in the, the third experiment down, what you'll find is that what this model is actually doing is trying to match some historic data using output from the model. So it's trying to adjust two model parameters, contact rate and texture probability, such that the model best matches some historic data shown in yellow. Okay. And there's a, there's a detailed exercise that I've provided to you that helps you understand um, how this is operating. And we'll be talking about this later in but just be aware that the, the, the purpose of this model is to, is to run a simulation of infection spread. And the, the particular focus of this example is to show how it can be used for calibration. And we'll be coming back to that. But at the moment, what we're going to be doing is using this as a little test bed for how to collect data. Okay? Um, so specifically, we're going to look at a couple techniques for collecting data and exporting it. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is add in an experiment. Okay, so um, in short, we uh, we go here, we do new, and we add an experiment, and I'd like you to call it a simple experiment. Okay, um, experiment, mm -hmm. and um, it should uh, it says copy model time settings from calibration. That's fine, and it's just a simulation experiment type. Okay, um, it's not an optimization, it's not a, a calibration experiment. Okay, so it just created a, um, a simple experiment. And I'd like, I'd like you to save the resulting model to avoid overwriting other models, okay? You can do file, save as, and I'd like you to put it in your, okay, great. Um, so I'll, I'll create a thing called ABM Bootcamp just so you can um, see it. So it's ABM Bootcamp 2002. C slash ABM Bootcamp 2002. Okay, um, so that's where I'm going to uh, put this. Boom, and um, that's where you can put it. And I'm going to save it. Okay, um, just just so we can have uh, have it there, and so we don't we don't get messages saying I can't change the example. Um, I can't save it away. Okay, um, so uh, are you folks still waiting for it to save? Sure, help, help, TA. Okay, um, anyone else need help? Okay, um, are, is it done saving? Okay, sure, okay. Um, so yeah, all we did was add a new experiment, which was a regular simulation experiment after opening it. Um, okay, so um, for those of you who, uh, who have opened it, I'd like you to run the experiment now, okay? And I'm using this model just to sort of get us an example which has some dynamics on which we can collect data. So if, if you run this experiment, you should see something like this. population. 
This is a model that's 100 by 100 grid. Okay. So there's this population here. Um, and uh, by running it, what we'll see is that um, we actually have some, some information shown visually as it's running. Okay. Um, so for example, the number of infectious people is changing over time. And if you click on it, you should be able to see the number currently, and you should be able to create a little, um, a little graph which shows it over time. Okay, um, if you click on this, you should be able to um, to have a graph. Alternatively, you can have it have it shown as data. Furthermore, you can actually change it by by clicking this little um, this little um, item here, this little um, uh, pen, as it were. You can actually adjust it if you want to overwrite its value. So, so that's one item. That's, you'll notice that's a variable. Just like the variables we've had in our model called color or n around, n alive around, um, etc. You'll notice the parameter values are also shown. So we have a value for, for these. These are all not changing right now. Um, but they, they too, if they were changing, which they you know, generally shouldn't do too frequently, um, uh, their values are shown. And there's information on an environment. And if you click on the environment, you can see the characteristics of the environment. And if you click on people, what you'll actually see is there's 10,000 uh, active objects and various people. These things currently say 0, 1, 2, and so on. Um, but in a dynamically varying context, it, it could be you'll see something different. So N infectious lists the number of infectious people, as we've said. And then this data set is accumulating data. Okay, um, it's accumulating data on the number of infectious people over time. And we'll see how this this is uh, occurring in just just a few minutes here. But um, uh, in the meantime, I want to emphasize the value of this. So um, here we can create a a graph of, of of variables, and you can in fact copy it. You can right click on things, and then you can paste it into Excel. So let's try doing that. Um, so um, the first thing I'll do it for is just this N infectious. Now, that's kind of gone to zero now, um, and, and it's, it's going to be uninteresting. So I'm going to just run this model again. And you know I have this clicked on, and I, I'm graphing it. I, I went and clicked on this sort of graph, and it's sort of rising there. Now, I could pause the model if I wanted to, if I were interested in a in a particular subsection. I'm going to speed this up a bit just so, whoa, okay. I can right click on it, copy, and then I can go call up Excel, which would be under uh, Programs, uh, Microsoft Office probably, and you can call up Excel. And once Excel call, uh, comes up, what you can do is click on a cell and paste, okay. And what you'll see is data exported that you saw exported. And what you see here is the time. What you hear, see here is the, the value of that variable, which is n infectious. So it's, you know, count of, so uh, prevalent uh, case count of, of infectious people, okay? Um, and given that this is in Excel, we could easily graph this out. In this case, we'd probably use a, an XY uh, plot. Okay. Um, okay, so that's a useful thing. Um, but more significant is this data set. This data set actually doesn't depend on when we click on this. It's accumulating data to this time. And as it's running, it's accumulating more and more and more data. And um, when the model run finishes, we likewise can copy this. And we can go and paste this. Now you'll notice that this is of a different sort. Instead of being data regarding the number of infectious people at sort of arbitrary snapshots, I shouldn't say arbitrary snapshots from the model had events occurring. Here we have the data at a regularly set, at a delineated set of intervals. Okay, um, and we're going to talk about how you can record that. Any TA help needed? Do you help? What was the first column you copied this This one here is the time, and this one here is the count of infections. Yeah, so that's from the, from 
Oh, you're, you're saying this one here? Yeah. Oh, this one I copied from this variable up here, but it requires you to open it and display, well, you actually don't have to display it as this, you could just um, uh, do it, uh, no, excuse me, I think you may have to display it as this, as a graph. So, so if I went like this and I, I were to go click on this, so you have to click this to open it, and then you click and it creates a little graph there, and you can do copy, right click on it and do copy, and then paste into Excel, okay? Um, so, so this is what I call, this, this sort of mode is what I call ad hoc data export. When you have variables in your model, these variables could be at the global level or they could be at the, the level of a particular individual. If you had variables here, you could copy from them uh, for an individual. But, but they are amenable to sort of displaying, copying, pasting, okay? Um, yeah, sure. From my own perspective, this ad hoc capturing is um, is is great for sort of quickly trying to figure out what's going on in the model, debug it, and so on. But it's not what you want to rely on for real export from your model. Um, for that, we're going to turn to this data set, and we're going to see how it should be written out and that sort of thing to, to this. And so, um, ad hoc data set explore or ad hoc exploration of variables. And it's that the idea was kind of a convenient, quick, sort of quick and dirty solution, as we say, to the science. Um, um, it's, it's something you can do very readily and, and get some raw insight from. And in that sense, the fact that it has, I, I believe, a sort of defined window generally doesn't bother me. What's, what's more about practical constraint, actually, is that I, I need to click on this thing um, for it to sort of start recording it in the first place, and it's more dictated by that and the vagaries of when I get this open. Really, it's just a kind of interactive way to gain insight mm -hmm. as to what's going on. If I really want to collect data, I'm thinking more about formal data structures like data sets, okay? Um, and, and there, you can set the limit to be arbitrarily high, okay? Um, so, um, 